Living in a small rural town has its pros and cons. For one, I know the name of nearly everyone I attend school with, and the surrounding area is a rather tight-knit community. One of the downsides is that it can be difficult to find anything to do, especially for a high school student. Over the last few weeks, myself and a number of other students at Upper Perk Yeoman High School set out to discover activities in the nearby area. The following is a collection of the best we found. This is Nothing To Do. For Nothing To Do, we decided to give ourselves a 30 mile radius as the crow flies and challenge ourselves to find something to do within that range. As you might expect, there's quite a lot to do in that large an area and we certainly didn't do it all. Starting with Jackson Gray and Naomi Brooks, we venture not too far from home in Quakertown. Jackson and I decided to head east, specifically to Quakertown, known for its historical background. The first place we visited was Lake Noxamixon, which is a reservoir in southeastern Pennsylvania and the largest lake in Bucks County. It was originally to be called Tohicken Lake after the creek, but its name was later changed to Noxamixon, meaning place of soft soil. The second place we visited was the Liberty Bell, and it is reported to have been hidden on the property overnight on its way to Allentown, PA. In 1777, the Continental Congress had decreed the bell be moved before the British Army melted it down for ammunition. On the night of September 18, 1777, six days after the Liberty Bell left Philadelphia, it was stored overnight behind Eben Folk's house near the Red Lion Inn at the corner of Broad and Main Streets in Quakertown. For my own adventures, I first traveled to the Bethlehem Steel Stacks. If we're here, we gotta get there. Oh, and did I forget to mention that we had to use paper maps for this and not Google Maps? Yeah, that was an extra layer of difficulty. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna take 22 to Bethlehem? I, well, where are we? Are we down here or something? We're like right by the letters in Allentown. Right there? Yeah, somewhere in there. So we'd have to get to 22. Yeah. And then go east. And this is Tyler. To my right. Him and my brother came with me to help me film this. All right. <laughs> After a handful of wrong turns and navigation errors, go not south. Wait, this is 309. This isn't 22. We finally made it to the steel stacks, once the home of the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. From the mid 19th century through the 20th century, Bethlehem Steel produced a large majority of the world's steel. During World War II, they produced approximately 70% of all steel armor required for the United States military vehicles and a fifth of the Navy's fleet. During their peak, it's estimated that their total employment was about 300,000 people. Since then, the plant has been shut down. Currently, it is home to the Sands Casino and a small shopping mall. There are a number of public events held there every year, and the grounds attract many tourists to the local area to marvel at the size of the plant. If you can make the trip to Bethlehem, the steel stacks are a great place for some sightseeing. In keeping with the theme of iconic skylines, We'll join Devin Stevens in Reading. So today, we're starting off right here, which is where the high school is. And then we're going off of 73 and around 100 and whatnot. And we're gonna head to the Pagoda for our first location over west. Built in 1901 and donated to the city of Reading in 1911, the Pagoda has stood atop Mount Penn for more than a century through both World War I and II. It offers a 30-mile panoramic view of Reading, Pennsylvania, and the surrounding countryside. Housing a bell cast in 1739 in Obata, Japan, the pagoda was used as a temple for Buddhists until 1881, and was later partially destroyed. During the Second World War, there was a large majority that wanted the building demolished in response to a large anti-Japanese sentiment in America at the time. In 1949, however, the building was restored and now functions as a cafe as well as an icon of Reading. For my own next day of travel, my girlfriend and I drove to Bake Oven Knob, a somewhat secret locals attraction along the Appalachian Trail. We found that the recent snowstorm that was followed by rain left the road completely frozen over. Oh, wow. We decided to continue on foot to the top of the mountain. The things I do for Mr. Thomas. I know. Although a full hike would have been a 1500 foot climb in elevation, the parking lot brings you within a 20 minute hike to the top. 
This hike, however, was made considerably more difficult by the freezing rain that preceded our visit. You'll know you've reached the top when you find the knob mural. During the summer months, there is often fresh graffiti here on the rocks. Surprisingly, there's little foul graffiti here. Much of it remembers lost loved ones or represents a relationship. Standing here on a clear day, visibility seems to go on forever. Unfortunately, the day we made the trek was foggy and cloudy. Being only an hour from our area, this is an excellent place to spend the day. Within 35 minutes of Allentown, you can always stop somewhere to eat, and the trail is generally well-traveled and has cell service, so no worries of getting lost.